Long ago, Zelda Ocarina of Time was once the most popular game to speedrun, especially so in 2014. This was the year that Any% percent specifically was at its peak in popularity, widely run by new players and veteran speedrunners alike, and very popular on Twitch, even outside of traditional speedrunning circles. This hype was fueled by new discoveries, hype tricks, intense competition, and legendary world records. What more could you ask for? Well, I don't know. The world record is getting close to breaking 18 minutes, but the run is just so optimized. There just isn't a whole lot of time save left to be squeezed out of the current route. It would take a massive new discovery to push Ocarina of Time any percent below this coveted milestone. Sure enough, on February 4th, 2015, a brand new glitch would be discovered that changed the game forever, though not necessarily for the better. This trick, although a huge time save, relied on incredibly unfavorable RNG. If you didn't get it first try, you could kiss a potential PB or world record goodbye. It was so awful, caused many runners to quit running any percent, and led to many bored viewers to stop watching entirely. And it very well may have been the beginning of OOT's decline in speedrun popularity. This is the nightmare of get item manipulation. Before we go over this glitch, and its subsequent tyranny, let's set the stage. The objective of the Any% percent run around this time was to defeat Ganon, which sounds like a huge stretch to do in under 20 minutes, and it would be if it weren't for the bottle. The bottle is arguably the most broken item in Ocarina of Time, as its properties can be exploited to perform some game-breaking glitches. One of these is a glitch known as Ocarina Items, which allows you to play some of Link's items like a pseudo-ocarina after re-catching bugs or fish in a bottle, and then playing this fake ocarina on the edge of a blue warp at the end of a dungeon. In the case of any percent, this is at the end of Deku Tree. This allows Link to break free once he activates the blue warp, and if he exits the boss room using the door back to the Deku Tree basement on the same frame as the blue warp is supposed to take Link away, he ends up in the Ganon's Tower escape sequence at the end of the game. This is known as a wrong warp, and from here, all you need to do is escape the crumbling castle and defeat Ganon to complete the run. Long story short, the bottle is the most important item in this run, and one of your first main objectives is to get one ASAP. There are four bottles normally obtainable in Ocarina of Time, and the fastest one to get by far is in Kakariko Village, given as a reward for returning seven loose chickens to their pen. This was obtained after performing a simple glitch to leave the forest early via the shortcut from Lost Woods to Zora River down to Kakariko Village. After getting the bottle, you'd catch bugs from under this rock, which are needed to activate Ocarina items. Then, you'd clear the Deku Tree, Wrong Warp, and beat the game. This was the general blueprint for any percent from April 18th, 2012, all the way to February 4th, 2015. The day Get Item Manipulation, or GIM, was discovered. Now, despite what I just said, GIM actually has a history dating back all the way back to 2011, when the British glitch hunter, Glitches and Stuff, discovered a glitch they dubbed Get Item Delay. In this ancient video, we can see that in the deep waters of Lake Hylia, Link drowns. <laughs> But then, he's revived by a fairy, where shortly after, Link surfaces onto the platform where the fire arrows are after shooting the sun. During this, the camera spins round for a few seconds as Link goes to pick up the fire arrows, but as he holds them triumphantly in the air, something isn't quite right. Normally, when Link holds up an item like this, all entities around him are supposed to freeze until the text box is cleared and the player regains control. But this time, a nearby Tektite was able to hit Link as he held up the fire arrows, allowing the player to regain control before the item model disappears. Glitches and Stuff was able to walk around with the fire arrows hovering on Link's face until they jumped into a body of water, and upon resurfacing, Link collects the fire arrows and it's added to the inventory. Interestingly, Get Item Delay and Execution work the same way as another glitch known as Walking While Talking. A strange glitch discovered by ZAR that's used to lock the camera and allow Link to walk around when he shouldn't be able to. 
This glitch had multiple methods and applications in the past, but the item floating in Link's face was a new mysterious effect with no prior documentation. For four years, this glitch and its strange unexplored properties remained an unsolved mystery. Of course, when February 4th, 2015 rolled around, that all changed. On that fateful day, MZX Rules, a glitch hunter with arguably the deepest understanding of Ocarina of Time's code, was looking to investigate certain glitches to try to understand them better. During this investigation, glitches and stuff showed MZX Rules the fire arrow get item delay and asked him to look into it deeper. Upon closer inspection, MZX noticed that while the glitch was active, a byte in memory dubbed the get item variable was being affected when Link was walking near bushes. The get item variable's purpose is to determine what item Link will obtain when he finishes collecting an item. The fact that it was actively changing while delaying the process of collecting the fire arrows had huge ramifications. What if you could change this variable in the get item delay state and receive a completely different item upon surfacing from water? MZX Rules put this hypothesis to the test, and in the process, made a groundbreaking discovery. When in the get item delay state, making contact with treasure chests specifically could alter the get item variable. This is due to how chests affect this byte in a unique way. Whenever you approach the chest, the item ID of the contents in the chest will be written into the get item variable, except with one big difference. It is the negative value. Whenever you open the chest to collect the item, it becomes the positive value, and you collect the item as intended. However, with get item delay active, if you make contact with a chest, the overwritten variable remains negative, meaning that when surfacing from water, you could get a completely different item. This was how get item delay evolved into get item manipulation. This sudden breakthrough sent the community into a frenzy, as multiple parties began to investigate the possibilities. One such person was Skater, a top any% percent runner and glitch hunter with a knack for developing revolutionary strategies. And the new strat he was about to develop was no exception. That same afternoon, Skater found two very powerful applications of Gim in the Deku Tree. The first one discovered involved touching the small chest containing a recovery heart in the Deku Tree basement with Get Item Delay active. And after jumping into the nearby water, the game gives you the light arrows. This was not useful in any percent, since you skipped the Ganondorf fight, but it had amazing potential for other categories such as No Wrong Warp, where you need the light arrows to defeat Ganondorf. The second use of Gim involves climbing up to the first floor and touching the large chest containing the dungeon map. Unlike the light arrow Gim, this one proved to be the big breakthrough for any percent, as when surfacing from water, the game will give you a bottle containing blue potion. This sounded excellent on paper, since if you could route this into any percent, it would eliminate the journey out of the forest and going out of the way to Kakariko instead allowing a bottle to be obtained on the way to Goma. By using a quick kill strat which involved Link dying right after landing the killing blow on Goma, you could exit the dungeon faster for a quick detour to the Lost Woods to collect bugs for the wrong warp, and then re-enter Goma's boss room with the stone slab now gone. There was a bit of a problem though. How would you activate get item delay? During initial testing, people mainly used a bottled fairy to revive Link when he died in water to activate get item delay, much how glitches and stuff did in 2011. But you can't really use this method to get a bottle faster when you need another bottle. Luckily though, there were some nearby resources in the Deku Tree basement that allowed for a fairyless method to obtain a bottle. But unfortunately for speedrunners, this is when the trick becomes an RNG nightmare. A few minutes ago, I briefly mentioned that Get Item Delay worked similarly to another glitch known as Walking While Talking. Some of the more useful applications of Walking While Talking are thanks to some quirks related to crawl spaces. When Link exits a crawl space, the camera locks for about a second and a half, during which he cannot use any items. If Link does something unexpected within this one and a half second time frame, such as reading a sign or opening a door, some strange side effects can occur 
Many of these quirks have been exploited for useful tricks thanks to this camera lock effect. Turns out much like the fairy revival in Water Method, using Walking While Talking to collect a Deku Nut for the first time during this camera lock results in some nearby enemies not being frozen during Link's da 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 pose. This means that Get Item Delay can be activated without a bottle. In an actual run, you would quickly make your way to basement one of the Deku Tree as quickly as you can, ideally making it up to the higher ground to skip most of the floor. Next, you'd enter the nearby crawl space and make your way to the center of the room on the other side. In there, Goma Larva will spawn, and they serve as the crux for the entire trick. One will be killed to spawn a Deku Nut drop near the crawl space, and another nearby larva will be used to activate Get Item Delay by jumping in a Link as he holds up the nut. Then, Link will climb back up to touch the map chest before plummeting all the way down into the waters at the bottom of the Deku Tree to collect the bottle. What a brilliant strategy! By using Gim to collect the bottle on the way to Goma, instead of taking a substantial detour to gather chickens in Kakariko, you could save around 30 seconds over the previous route, which was a huge time save for such a short run. Just when a sub-18 minute time seemed out of reach, suddenly there was so much time to be saved. Unfortunately, those are the only positive things I have to say about the trick. This new route hinges on performing Gim, and if you wanted to save time over the old route, you'd need to nail the item delay first try. But unlike other tricks in the run, where failing it is merely a skill issue, Gim relied on RNG. Enemies in Ocarina of Time have drop rates for items they drop when killed. But only a few of these items could be used to activate Gim. Out of all the possible items the larva could drop, the only realistic drop that would be useful in the route are Deku Nuts specifically the first time you pick one up. When a Goma larva is killed, they have a whopping 1 in 8 chance of dropping Deku Nuts. Runners would increase these odds by luring 3 to the crawl space and killing 2 in a single jump slash to increase the odds of getting a nut drop to about 23.4%. That's not great. So no big deal, right? Just enter the crawl space again and reload the room, right? Right? Well, not exactly. Missing a first try nut drop wastes 20 to 30 seconds, almost as much time as the route is supposed to save. That means if you don't get that 23% nut drop, reset! The odds of a run continuing past this point are unfavorable to say the least, made even worse because there are several run ending tricks after Gim. Also, after every reset, you'd have to watch the nearly 3 minute intro cutscene again and again when starting a new run, which wasn't removed from official timing until 2022. All for a trick not even halfway through the run. But wait, it gets even worse. You know how I just said that the odds of getting a Deku Nut drop first try was about 23.4%? That is true, but the odds of a successful nut spawn is actually closer to 15% overall. You see, when the larva drops a Deku Nut, it can drop in any direction, and there are some positions that won't work, most notably in front of the crawl space, where you need to re-enter and exit in order to lock the camera for get item delay to work. If it wasn't obvious by now, this strat put any percent in a pretty unhealthy state. Many newer and lower level runners would stick to the old Kakariko route as a result. Less new runners were eager to learn the category, and viewership began to fall. That didn't change the fact that if you were a top runner and wanted a shot at the record, you had to put up with terrible RNG. Some top runners like Skater and Jodenstone continued to grind and trade the world record regardless, while others moved on to other categories and games. Eventually, Jodenstone himself would step away from the category, and after he showcased the new route at the premier speedrunning event, Summer Games Done Quick 2015, who could blame him? Ocarina of Time Any% had been a staple at GDQ for many years in a row, with each new exhibition showcasing a new exciting route change or a new trick that would blow your socks off. Joden Stone got accepted to run Any% at SGDQ 2015, and over 100,000 concurrent viewers were about to witness what new exciting tricks these Zelda runners had up their sleeves this time. What they were presented with was this. 
Seven minutes in, Jordan was playing near flawlessly, and the run was off to a great start. Now, he just needed the game to play nice with nut drops. He doesn't get it first try. If this wasn't a marathon run, this is where he'd reset. But it's no big deal. He set himself a pretty generous 25 minute estimate, and the probability of him getting a nut drop will increase with each attempt. And it shouldn't take him much longer. Second try is a dud, as is the third, but on the fourth try, a nut drops. Despite him losing a minute and a half to bad RNG, the run was about to get going. Except it wasn't. The nut had dropped too close to the wall. When luring the larva to the hole, you'll notice Jodin is close to the wall when the larva leaps at him. This is to prevent the larva from hitting him at all. In an ironic twist of fate, when he went to pick up the nut, he was too close to the wall, and the larva couldn't hit him to activate item delay. Jodin knew that this was a possibility, so he saved beforehand so he could try again without going too far back. Unfortunately for Jodin Stone, the worst was yet to come. Ah, uh, that's not good. Not good. Ah, <laughs> uh, not again. Okay, we're officially heading into bad luck territory now. <laughs> if I ever get there. Okay, come on. All right, all right, all right. Okay. All right, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, here we go. Good job, guys. Well done. Well done, everyone. Thank you for the support. After an additional 17 unsuccessful attempts and losing nearly nine more minutes, Jodin finally gets a double nut drop which has a 1.5625% chance of happening at all. The odds of this incredibly unlucky marathon RNG is around 1 in 5,996. The rest of the run goes amazingly, with Jodin nailing the very difficult Instaclip Void Warp first try, but that didn't stop the fact that this run finished overestimate by nearly 5 minutes due to bad luck. Compared to past marathon showcases of OOT, this run had relatively lukewarm reception. 100,000 people witnessed just how nearly unwatchable any percent had become. The last any percent record set around this time was a 1745 by Skater, set weeks before Jodan's SGDQ run. It would remain the record for nearly a year, with not much competition. Skater kept plugging away but to no avail. Another contentious aspect of the trick was due to the N64's error handling system, GIM would crash on N64 and IQ versions of the game, while the glitch worked just fine on Wii Virtual Console, an officially emulated version of the game, but still emulated nonetheless. Many runners did not like the idea of an emulator glitch being required for world record, although this viewpoint has mostly eroded over time. It's still banned in bingo, though. Let's go, bingo! Even so, each new world record would still be met with respect and applause, as few and far between as they were during this era. One rare case was Torge, a top runner who began running any percent after Gim's discovery, and within a year, he managed to set a new world record of 1742. It was just a shame that the any percent run was played by such detrimental RNG. Thankfully, this would be the last any percent record set before the community saw the light at the end of the tunnel. On July 5th, 2016, 
a new, non-RNG method of activating GIM was discovered. This method was thanks to the theory crafting and testing done by Skater, Glitches and Stuff, and Blooby Blah. This method would involve entering the water in Deku Tree Basement 2 and exiting the water by grabbing the vines underwater, which you normally aren't supposed to do. This prevents Link's surfacing animation from playing, which delays the whole da 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 animation when picking up an item, similar to how Link waits until he surfaces from underwater when grabbing the bottle containing Rudo's letter at the bottom of Lake Hylia. Skater theorized that with the correct position, you could press C up in the water at the same time as you shield a projectile nut from a nearby Deku scrub, allowing for a super swim, where after you kill your speed, you would have a frame to grab onto the vine without surfacing. The position for the setup was found by Blooby Blah, while Glitches and Stuff found out how to grab the vines. From here, you would climb back up, kill one of the nearby Balas for a 100% guaranteed nut drop, burn the web, activate item delay, and proceed with performing the rest of Gim. This method, while trickier, eliminated the awful RNG completely. But wait, does it save any time? As it turned out, no. It did not save time. And it was harder. But hey, the RNG factor is pretty much gone. Any percent is saved, right? Well, not quite yet. At least, not for a few more days. A few days later, on July 10th, the Macaron would find a new faster setup for Gim. In Deku Tree Basement 1, you would clip out of bounds using the gold sculptula on the vines leading back up to the ground floor. When in the water out of bounds, the camera will lock into place. When Link is near the vines when this happens, you could press A, Z, and C up on the same frame to perform a dive cancel, which will allow him to grab onto the vines without surfacing. Then, you would climb onto the vines on a specific frame, which is way harder than it looks. The game still thinks Link is diving underwater, allowing him to kill the nearby Deku Baba and grab the nut to perform a 100% guaranteed gim. Later on, Baker would find a faster setup for the vine clip to make the trick even faster. Overall, this new method of gim not only eliminated RNG nut drops, but was nearly 20 seconds faster. Any percent had entered a new golden age with major RNG elements from previous routes gone. And it didn't just help out any percent. In the No Wrong Warp category, you are obviously forbidden from using the Wrong Warp. Therefore, you are forced to collect the items required to defeat Ganondorf. The bottle is very important in this run, as it's used for a separate glitch known as Reverse Bottle Adventure, which I plan on talking about in a future video. RBA can be used to obtain certain items and songs much quicker than intended, such as a quiver to carry arrows, a bomb bag, and Zelda's lullaby. It is also used for ocarina items, along with Zelda's lullaby, to obtain magic from the Great Fairy atop Death Mountain. The light arrows are also needed to stun Ganondorf. As fate would have it, the bottle and light arrows are both items you could obtain using Gim in the Deku Tree, but you couldn't really Gim both efficiently. Of course, this new dive cancel gim changed that. You see, the old RNG gim method actually put Deku Nuts in your inventory, preventing you from using the nuts again to activate item delay. Fortunately, dive cancel gim doesn't do that, meaning until you pick up a Deku Nut drop without activating item delay, you can use nuts to perform multiple gims, back to back. No Wrong Warp performs this double gim, which saves several minutes by not getting the Kakariko bottle and not having to watch the longest cutscene in the game to get light arrows. That's pretty neat. Still banned in bingo though. Let's go bingo! A lot has changed since the discovery of Dive Cancelled Gim. In 2020, the Any% route radically changed following the opening of the Pandora's box that is SRM. The old Any% Wrong Warp route from 2012 to 2019 is still widely ran to this day, just renamed to Defeat Ganon. In 2022, following the discovery of the Child Collapse skip, the World Record route now performs double gim for the light arrows in addition to getting a bottle. While Young Link cannot use the light arrows normally, using a glitch called Equip Swap allows them to be equipped as Child, which causes Link to draw a slingshot. This is much faster than collecting the slingshot, and is used to perform the new collapse skip. If you wish to learn more about that discovery, 
I made a video on it a while back in case you want to learn more. Gim certainly had a profound effect on Ocarina of Time as a speed game. Its initial implementation in 2015 led to an awful RNG-dependent any% percent route that was likely the beginning of OOT's decline in speedrunning popularity after its peak in 2014. But thanks to the perseverance of dedicated runners and strat finders, the RNG curse inflicted on Gim was broken. And despite what many outsiders think, Ocarina of Time speedrunning is in one of the healthiest spots in years. And there is no better time to get into Defeat Ganon than today, as new runners never have to deal with the Goma Larva nut drops ever again. Thanks for watching.